and welcome to another edition of the Lee Weekly Spotlight presented by Landmark Insurance Group. I'm your host, Carmen Lastoria. Today we begin with the Lady Flames soccer team. They ended the regular season with a 5-0 blanking of Shorter University. Summer Lancer added two goals and leads the team with nine on the year. The All-GSC team was announced on Monday and the Lady Flames placed four members on the first team. Senior Laura Thacker, junior Kenzie Chickowitz, sophomore Summer Lancer, and sophomore Megan Newman were all named to the GSC first team. The women's soccer team will battle West Florida on Friday at 6 p.m. in Florence, Alabama in the semifinals of the GSC tournament. We had a chance to catch up with Coach Chris Hennessy after Friday's match. And what a regular season it was. You guys will be co-champions, uh, no worse than co-champions, yeah. and uh, still a, a shot, depending on what happens on uh, Sunday with North Alabama to be the number one seed. But a, a great performance tonight for you guys. You really came out attacking from the beginning. What are some of your thoughts on the match tonight and the season in general so far? Well, I thought the match tonight, we came out, um, it was a little slow to start with. I think a lot of that was due to the conditions of the field. Uh, we got an early goal. It was a great finish by Kayla. But uh, we, we played our way into the game. It was uh, difficult. We, we kind of warmed up before the game, then it went to overtime, so it slowed our progression down in there. But the season's been great. We, um, you know, after everyone knows it was a, a tough start with injuries and everything else. And we, we've come back, we showed so much character. And, you know, to finish, you know, no lower than second in the conference and co-champions uh, if UNA win on Sunday, that's a great achievement for these girls because they've battled through um, a lot of adversity this year and uh, really proud of them. And, of course, tonight was senior night. Got a chance to honor Laura Thacker and Molly McLaughlin. Talk a little bit about your seniors and what they've meant to this program over the last few years. Yeah. Well, as um, you know, Molly's been injured the last couple of years and she's uh, been she's been so important to the team. Uh, although it, she's not been on the field, what she has done for the program off the field has just been has been unbelievable. Her character, her uh, her energy around the locker room um, is is irreplaceable. And and obviously Laura, she's just a great leader out there. She's a great player and she's playing very high level of soccer right now. And really proud of her. And it, she'll be she'll be sadly missed. Congratulations, coach. Best of luck moving forward. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. In what has become a staple of the Lee University homecoming festivities, the Lee volleyball team will once again host its annual Volley for a Cure match on Friday at 7 p.m. as it welcomes the University of West Georgia to the sport court at Walker Arena. This is the eighth year Coach Andrea Hudson and her club have hosted the benefit match, which raises money for the Mary Ellen Loker Scholarship Foundation. The funds help a family affected by breast cancer, and the scholarship is always awarded in a special presentation in between sets two and three of the match. The goal is to raise $25,000 this year. Last year, the team raised $23,000, and over the eight years of the event, it is estimated that about $130,000 have been raised for this great cause. Fans interested in helping to support Volley for a Cure can do so by buying t-shirts at the match and by participating in the silent auction, which will be set up in the Walker Arena concourse throughout the evening. Make sure to wear pink and come out and support the Lee Volleyball team as they help benefit this great cause on Friday night. The Lee men's soccer team saw its season come to an end on Tuesday night in the opening round of the Gulf South Conference Tournament from the Lee soccer field. The Flames fought West Florida in a very physical battle. They fell behind 2-0 early before the GSC Player of the Year, David Perez, scored to cut the deficit to 2-1. Just moments later, however, the Argos caught a break, earning a PK after a penalty in the box. Jose Oliveria connected to make it 3-1 at the halftime break. In the second half, it was more DP as he once again scored a goal his 17th of the season to bring Lee within one. The Flames' comeback effort would fall just short, though, falling 3-2 to West Florida. Lee ends the season at 11-5-2 overall and were third in the GSC with a 6-2-1 record. We had a chance to catch up with Coach Paul Fury after Tuesday's match. Final score here tonight from the Gulf South Conference Tournament. West Florida edges Lee 3-2 in a hard-fought battle. Uh, Coach, obviously not the results you were looking for, but, a, boy, a valiant effort from your boys, at the, especially near the end there of the second half. They get that second goal. Looks like we had some chances there for the equalizer. It just didn't come tonight. Your overall thoughts on this matchup uh, with West Florida tonight? Well, it was a great game, but, but even before I get into you know some of the things of the game, I'm just glad that we're – uh, fortunate enough to play the game here at Lee with the weather that we've had. Um, I just want to uh, 
Just a, a, a big hearty thanks to uh, Larry Berry and his crew who worked all day to make this field playable and they did a great job with it. I, you know, they certainly were uh, MVPs of, uh, of the day early on and, and Cole Strong helping us to orchestrate that and having a helicopter here to even blow it. It was an interesting day to get the field ready to go. And, and we like playing here because, I mean, we have the best fans in the Gulf South Conference. You know, they're, they're there, they're supportive, they're vocal, they're into the game. They came out in force. Uh, I haven't seen fans like this, you know, in the Gulf South this year. And so I, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Uh, the heartbreaking aspect of it all is, you know, our guys fought like I knew they would and, and led by our senior class. And, and my heart just bleeds for those guys right now because they played with such emotion and, 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 and left every molecule out on the field tonight. And we, we came up short again. And it's, it's a tough pill to swallow, but I'll credit West Florida. They, they came in ready to play tonight. Talk a little bit about David Perez. Earlier in the week, he was named the Gulf South Conference Player of the Year, our first year to be eligible for these awards that are voted on by coaches. Sometimes the new kids on the block don't always uh, get the recognition, but DP made it kind of hard on the coaches. 15 goals in the regular season. He added two more tonight to finish with 17 goals. Talk about his special performance all year long, but particularly tonight, making some big plays for you guys. Well, it's, it's a no-brainer, uh, you know, for him to get player of the year because he had such a fantastic season, uh, scoring some big goals throughout. You know, when we played West Florida down at their place back in early October, he had an unbelievable free kick. He's just been scoring spectacular goals. But, you know, you, you go and you get the award, uh, you get the recognition, and obviously it didn't go to his head because he came out tonight and he worked hard, and uh, he came up for two big ones. And, you know, it's a, it's a crying shame that, uh, you know, even – he even worked it for us to get a penalty kick, and you know it just wasn't meant to be. But um, we were right there, and uh, he's a special player, and I'm glad I got him for another year. In a few words, finally, Coach, this season, can you sum it up, uh, the highs, the lows, but overall a wonderful year for you guys, being ranked as high as 12th, I believe, in the nation, uh, leading the conference for much of the year. Not quite the results we were looking for at the end of the season, but a, a spectacular effort from your boys this season. Well, I think maybe some of that is, you know, with our ranking and, and some of the success that we had midway through um, when you're a top 25 team, you know, you get that target on your back. And teams came and they played really well against us, you know. But I, I felt like our, our boys were pretty resilient and, you know, in, in every game uh, they come out, they, they're, they're focused. Um, you know, it's a special group, and uh, I just wish it would have been a little bit more, especially for, you know, our seniors. I felt like this was a team that uh, is, you know, postseason worthy, and, and for us not to get this one was, is a tough one. But, um, you know, I'll always remember this group because, uh, you know, of the way they play um, and, and the way they fight, uh, but mostly, you know, f for the way they are. They're great, great individuals. And it's been a privilege to be a part of this. Well, Coach, we certainly appreciate your time after a, a hard-fought battle tonight. We certainly appreciate a great season. Thanks, Carmen. Appreciate it. Fans, it's basketball time in Bradley County and on the campus of Lee University. The Flames will open up the exhibition portion of their schedule on Thursday evening as they play Bryan College at 7 p.m. On Saturday, the women will host Merrillville College at noon, and the men will follow against Martin Methodist at 2.30 in the annual homecoming games. If you can't make it to Walk Arena, you can catch all the action at GoLeafFlames.com with live video, audio, and stats of each contest. Kayla Morgan and his cross-country teams will run this weekend at the NCAA South Region Championships in St. Leo, Florida on Saturday. The GSC Champion Flames will run at 10.15 a.m. and the Lady Flames will start at 9 a.m. You can follow the live stats of each event at GoLeafFlames.com. If each team finishes in the top three, they will advance to the NCAA National Championship. And now it's time to recognize this week's Players of the Week. David Perez was named the Gulf South Conference Player of the Year after scoring 17 goals on the year and adding nine assists. Women's soccer coach Chris Hennessy was named GSC Coach of the Year in his first season as leader of the team. David Perez and Tom Hassall were named GSC first team members, while Gabe Franco and John Finley were members of the GSC second team. And now let's take a look at the upcoming schedule.
Well, that'll do it for this edition of the Lee Weekly Spotlight. Don't forget to be a part of all the homecoming festivities this weekend right here on the campus of Lee University. And don't forget, you can follow Lee University Athletics on social media. On Facebook, search Lee University Flames. Subscribe to our Lee University Flames YouTube page. And you can follow us on Twitter and Periscope and Instagram at Lee U Flames. And don't forget to sign up for the Lee Hotspot app. Go to mobile.leeuniversity.edu to sign up for the app. You simply download the app to your phone, check in to Lee Home Events, and earn points towards great prizes. I'm Carmen Lasoria. That'll do it for this edition of the Lee Weekly Spotlight. Have a great day, and as always, go Flames.